Assalamualaikum everyone So this is my uh, next video on uh, module 9 Okay so you have I think about 3 parts of uh, module 9 uh, videos uh, in this playlist So let's start with the first part of uh, module 9 Okay so I hope you have your textbook and your slide with you right now Okay let's start so today I want to start with a module 9 operating systems. So we are still using the same textbook, Discovering Computers 2018 by Vermont Support and R, which produced by Singish uh, Learning. Okay, now let's go straight away to the objectives of uh, our video today. So as usual, this is my kind of reminder to the students. Alright, now as you can see, these are the objectives uh, for the video today. So first of all, I will explain the purpose of an operating system. Then uh, I will proceed with uh, describing the startup process and shutdown options on computers and mobile devices. And, and I will end up with an uh, explanation on how an operating system provides a user interface, manages programs, manages memory, and coordinates tasks. Okay, now let's start with our first uh, slide. Now, when you purchase a computer or mobile device, it usually has an operating system and other tools installed. So these uh, tools and all the related tools collectively are known as a system software because uh, they consist of the programs that control or maintain the operations of the computer and its devices. An operating system is a set of programs that coordinate all the activities among computer or mobile device hardware. Other tools also enable you to perform maintenance type tasks usually related to managing devices, media, and programs used by computers and mobile devices. So most operating systems perform similar functions that may include starting and shutting down a computer or mobile device, providing a user interface, managing programs, managing memory, coordinating tasks, configuring devices, monitoring performance, establishing an internet connection, providing file management and other devices or media related tasks and updating operating system software. There are some operating systems also allows users to control a network and administer security. Okay, now let's start with the first function of operating system, which is starting computers and mobile devices. If a computer or mobile device is off, you press a power button to turn it on. If it is on, you may need to restart, sometimes called reboot, the computer or mobile device for a variety of reasons. For example, install a new program or app, update existing software, or experience a network or internet connectivity problem. When you start or restart a computer or mobile device, a series of messages may appear on the screen. The actual information displayed varies depending on the make and type of the computer or mobile device and the equipment installed. The second function will be shutting down computers and mobile devices. To turn off a computer or mobile device, you may be required to use operating system commands, press keyboard keys, push a power button, or a combination of these methods. Power options include shutting down the computer or mobile device, placing it in sleep mode, or placing it in hibernate mode. Both sleep mode and hibernate mode are designed to save time when you resume work on the computer or device. So, what are the differences between sleep and hibernate mode? Sleep mode at first saves any open documents and running programs or apps to RAM, turn off all unneeded functions and then places the computer in a low power state. Power is removed from a computer or device and any unsafe work will be lost. For hybrid mode, it saves any open documents and running programs or apps to an internal hard drive before removing power from the computer or device. 
the function of the power button on a computer or mobile device varies and users typically are able to configure its default behavior. Next function will be providing a user interface. You interact with an operating system through its user interface. A user interface controls how you enter data and instruction and how information is displayed on the screen. There are two types of operating system, which are graphical and command line. Operating system users interface often use a combination of these techniques to define how a user interacts with a computer or mobile device. Graphical user interface or GUI interact with menus and visual images by touching, pointing, tapping, or clicking buttons and other objects to issue commands. Many current GUI operating systems incorporate features similar to those of a browser such as links and navigation buttons. So these are examples of graphical user interface. Then we have a command line interface. In a command line interface, a user types commands represented by short keyboards or abbreviations or presses special keys on the keyboard to enter data and instruction. When working with a command line interface, the set of commands used to control actions is called the common language. The next following function will be managing programs. How an operating system handles programs directly affects your productivity. An operating system can be single tasking or multitasking. A single tasking operating system allows only one program or app to run at a time. For example, if you are using a browser and want to check email messages, you must exit the browser before you can run the email program. Operating systems on embedded computers and some mobile devices use a single task operating system. A multitasking operating system whereby allows two or more programs or apps to reside in memory at the same time. If you are working with a multitasking operating system, you don't have to exit the browser to run the email program. Both programs can run concurrently. When a computer is running multiple programs concurrently, one program is in the foreground and the others are in the background. The one in the foreground is the active program, that is the one you are currently are using. The other programs running but not in use are in the background. The foreground program typically is displayed on the screen and the background programs are hidden by partially or completely behind the foreground program. Some of the operating systems support a single user. Others support thousands of users running multiple programs. A multi-user operating system enables two or more users to run programs simultaneously. Then we move to the other function which is managing memory. The purpose of memory management is to optimize the use of a computer or device's internal memory such as RAM. If several programs or apps are running simultaneously, your computer or mobile device may use up its available RAM. For example, if you look at the page or a 9.8 in your module, you can see that the author already gave you the, some example of the calculation where the total RAM required to run a browser, a productivity software, a photo editing program will be 4.352 GB. So if the computer has only 4 GB of RAM, the operating system may have to use a virtual memory in order to run all the applications at the same time. When a computer or mobile device runs low on available RAM, this often results in the computer or mobile device running sluggishly. With virtual memory, the operating system allocates a portion of a storage medium such as a hard drive or a USB flash drive to function as additional RAM. Because virtual memory is slower than RAM, users may notice the computer slowing down while it uses virtual memory. So the area of the hard drive used for virtual memory is called swap file because it swaps data, information and instruction between memory and storage. A page is the amount of data and program instruction that can be swapped at a given time. 
the technique of swapping items between memory and storage called paging. It's a time-consuming process for the computer. When an operating system spends much of its time paging instead of executing application software, it is said to be fresh. Then, we reach to coordinating tasks, the another function of operating system. The operating system determines the order in which tasks are processed. A task is an operation of the, pro the processor manager. Tasks include receiving data from an input device, process instruction, send information to output device, and transfer items from storage to memory and memory to storage. Sometimes a device already may be busy processing one task when it receives a request to perform a second task. While waiting for devices to become idle, the operating system places items in buffers. A buffer is a segment of memory or storage in which items are placed while waiting to be transferred from an input device or to an output device. An operating system commonly uses buffers with printed documents. This process called spooling sends documents to be printed to a buffer instead of sending them immediately to the printer. So that's all for the first part of module 9. I will continue with this, uh, the next functions in the following video. So stay tuned with me.